this is actually a pretty interesting psychological game. Um, I'm not even sure whether I want to participate in this, but uh, let's give it a try uh, to see uh, how many people uh, on YouTube would actually fall uh, for very convincing lies um, uh, if it's being portrayed by uh, someone who seems to be credible on YouTube. So here is a, uh, here is a, uh, the first episode uh, in this uh, little tale. So <clears throat> when, uh, when I was uh, uh, a child, about 10 years old, um, I me and my family went uh, uh, into East Berlin and uh, crossing uh, the border. As uh, as usual, and this was during the Cold War, uh, while the uh, while the wall was standing, and so on. And whenever you crossed into East Berlin, uh, it was usually uh, long waiting lines, and so on. Uh, no contraband of any kind, uh, i.e., newspaper articles, books, and so on, weren't allowed. And uh, so, as we were crossing the border uh, with me in tow uh, and my mother uh, leading the way, so to speak, um, we came to this little uh, checkpoint, and the uh, East German border guard uh, proceeded on uh, proceeded with emptying my mother's purse. Um, <clears throat> you know, her bags and everything. Everything got taken out, just pretty much like. A <laughs> airport inspections here today and um, my mother being a pretty independent woman got pretty uh, ind indignant about this and she got pissed off and so what uh, ended up happening is uh, that uh, this, uh, this border guard um, actually raised his gun, a loaded uh, machine gun and uh, pointed it uh, at my mother's head. Now uh, this is uh, this is uh, probably uh, something that I will not uh, forget very soon because um, my mother uh, was very good at diffusing situations like this, and so he lowered his gun um, pretty quickly. Episode number two. I once, uh, in my younger days, when I was still in college, had several uh, uh, artworks and paintings um, exhibited during a national tour and exhibition um, in some uh, well-known um, museums around the country. Uh, and uh, it, it wasn't uh, anything spectacular, you know, not like uh, um, some major art event that would be <laughs> that would be publicized in New York uh, news, uh, art newspapers or so on, but it did happen. And uh, uh, I am, um, um, uh, I got kind of ambivalent about this whole thing because uh, what it was actually doing was uh, um, promoting um, the sorts of donors uh, which I didn't agree with. And so I uh, eventually opted out of uh, those types of venues. Episode number three. When uh, <laughs> when I was back uh, uh, studying in San Diego when I was in college, uh, I had a, a project that I was working on in a um, in a class designed for non physics majors. Uh, in which uh, we were able to choose our projects and so on. And um, as a result of, of uh, that uh, paper that I was writing, I came in contact with a nuclear scientist, um, actually someone very high up uh, on the um, Manhattan Project. He was uh, working very much in that project, and uh, I got to meet with this uh, person uh, personally, in his home, and um, we discussed the uh, the the world situation, uh, the um, the breakup of the Soviet Union, and so on. And uh, he had uh, he had very many interesting things to say. 
um, it um, um, it was quite an experience which uh, probably changed my entire outlook in terms of authority figures and um, uh, people working towards peace and um, making the wrong decisions um, <laughs> during uh, their lifetimes. Um, I saw it all in a different light after that. Anyway, this uh, this person, um, I believe, is no longer alive, but uh, that conversation did take place, and it was very much, uh, it had to go through official State Department channels and so on, and uh, I uh, I had to be approved before I, I had to go in, into his house, and um, he was quite human, actually. So um, it, uh, it changed my whole outlook. Um, after I talked to, with this individual. So, um, which is the lie? You decide. I'll let you know later. <laughs>